morning everybody, Calm Biker here. Just on a quick ride to try and put through some heat through my brand new tyres. Got some nice new PR4s on. I bought them ages ago and it's taken me this long to get round to fitting them. And of course I fit them uh, at the end of autumn which feels more like winter and it's just been miserable weather. I mean it's still wet now but it's been miserable weather so I haven't really had the chance to kind of put a heat cycle through them and prepare them but I've got a toy run tomorrow and I want to uh, get them ready for that anyway I thought I would show you a video of me fitting the tyres um, I thought that first but I have to tell you the truth the rear tyre I didn't do failed dismally because the tool that we're using to change it was a little bit too small for the frankly ridiculous 190 section rear tyre and um, also the tyre was really hard, the tyre that it came with. Even when I took it into the shop uh, to get it sorted out, he said, even with a proper machine, really hard tyre and hard to get it off. But the PR4s are a lot softer, so maybe next time. Or maybe I'll get a machine that's better for such a big tyre. Uh, but I thought I'd show you the process because it's one of those things that people worry about and always get somebody else to do. And uh, although I've now found someone who does it at a, a reasonable price, actually, um, who charged me 10 quid a tyre, some of the people out there are charging 20, 25 quid a tyre or even more if you take the bike in. So, and they're not always doing a good job, as I know, on the, uh, when I had the Z1000SX in for a new front tyre and the guy who put it on put my wheel on backwards. So... Uh, anyway, I'll stop gabbing now because it'll probably be a long video. So uh, enjoy the front tyre changing video. Good afternoon everybody, Cam Bike here and I'm at Tosh Boy's garage to do a little job for the Z1000 which isn't here but what is here is new tyres. Okay, first thing we need of course is tyres. So I've got a pair of brand new Pilot Road Force to go on there. Nice and big and fat. Next bit of kit we need is the tyre changer. Uh, now we've made a couple of modifications to this. With my amazing welding we've added a bar and mounted it to this uh, fence here and it's absolutely solid so you can really push against it. Um, we've got a bit of foam on here as well so that you don't damage the wheels and the whole thing's set up at this particular height so that as you're using it you can push with your thigh rather than just your hands. Is this pretty tough Tom? Well, yeah. How much do you weigh? Four or five pounds. You can handle six pounds at least. Woohoo! Finally, the bar. Now this is quite a tough bar, but the most important thing is plastic or nylon ends. That end for removing a tyre, that end for putting it back on. These, about 60 or 70 quid, so they're not cheap, but they are over-engineered, as Tosh would say. And, uh, you know, 60 quid, 40 quid, 100 pound, that's two tyre changes, isn't it? Going to pay for itself. Right, first task is the tyres be more pliant if they're warm. So we're just going to warm them up by blowing hot air around them using uh, Mrs Tosh's hairdryer. Not too close. We don't want to get in too hot. But enough that it blows air around and just gets the tyre nice and warm. Right. The front wheel is going to be done first. Really important that we put the tyre on the right way around. Um, unlike when I had my wheel done at a professional place where they put the wheel on backwards. So on the tyre here are some arrows that show you which way the tyre is supposed to rotate. All I'm going to do is put a mark on the disc that will come off later on when I use the, the brakes anyway that I'll clean off as an arrow in the same direction. Then once the tyre is off we can still see which way around the wheel is supposed to go. Nice reminder. making sure not to catch the discs. Now we need to remove all the air from the tyre and the only way to do that properly and get every bit of air out you can is to remove the valve cord.
Got to be careful when doing this because it can shoot out. Now it's time to break the tyre bead. Got a little bit of plastic because the bead breaker's got a metal end and I want to protect my wheels as much as possible. This is just, this piece of plastic, just an old oil bottle. So line it up just outside the wheel. Right, I've now got a bit of tyre soap, some people call it mountain compound, and what I'm going to do is try and get it right down into the drop centre, the metal of the wheel inside, before I turn this over and break the other bead. That way, as we take the tyre off, it should actually lubricate from the inside and make the tyre come off a lot easier. Hopefully you can see in there, it's getting right into the middle of the wheel. Obviously the tyre is getting covered as well, but that's not the important part. Time to break the bead on the other side. This time, we're lubricating the tyre. And again, right down to the bead. Right, now time to use this end of the bar. What we're going to do here is push the tyre down to get it away from the rim a little bit. Push this end in, and this little end piece with a ridge goes behind the bead. Then what happens is, as we spin the bar over, this will lift the tyre off and over the edge of the rim. At the same time, we're going to be pushing the other side down, trying to get that into the centre of the wheel, and that will help us to get the, the tyre off the wheel later on. So pushing down, just to get that gap, push this end in, and because we've got so much soap on, that slips nicely behind the bead. Now, I can bring the bar back this way. OK, now we just take the bar around and it should take the tyre off. As easy as that. Now we need to get the other bead off. Now this is apparently the hardest part. We need to get this side of the tyre into the centre of the wheel, where you've got the biggest gap. And here, I can get my hand behind it and just get a gap to get the bar into and then pull the tyre onto the bar.
So that bar is now through and outside the tyre. Now it's the same process again. Now you can see how much lubrication we used. Looks like a lot, but actually it's cheap anyway. And it just made it a doddle to get that tyre off. Right, I'm now going to loop up the rim inside the centre and also around the rim that I'm going to be pushing the tyre over and then we're against the clock. I've got to get the tyre on before the loop dries out. quite hot. Right, as before, looking at the arrow that I drew and finding the direction marks on the tyre, which is there. Now I need to make sure it goes on the right way around. The idea here is to get the bottom of that tyre right in the centre and then we'll see if I can push it on to the bottom B. And the answer is no! <laughs> oh yes! <laughs> Just to show you what happens when you use the proper tyre soap rather than fairy liquid. Don't use fairy liquid by the way. Fairy liquid is full of salt. There's no point in rotting your metal is there? But this is what you get. Lovely. And it dries so that later on it's not slippery at all. Just a little bit extra on the bead here. Only a little bit just to help it go in. And now back to the bar. This time we're using this end. And it just slides in until the wheels are behind the rim. Now the next thing we need to do is get the tyre over the rim. And uh, to do that we're just going to press down at first and then there's a device that a lot of people who've watched these type of videos will see, the little yellow thing or whatever. It's about 40 quid, quite expensive um, for what it is because essentially it's a tennis ball. So pushing the bead over the rim quite a way around and then the big yellow thing or the little yellow thing the Pac-Man can just eat the rim and all the idea of this is it'll stop the tyre popping back off again as we pull the bar around and seat it and now it's the same principle as before, I'm going to pull the bar around the centre, pushing the bead into the centre of the wheel all the time because that's where it's got the most free play. And with a little fin and puffing, it's on. And the key part of using the nylon headed bar is there's no scratches or nicks or anything in that powder coat. Right, we now need to seat the tyre into the bead. Um, now one thing that, that quite a lot of tyres have is a little yellow dot. 
which is a bounce mark that you have to position in a particular place opposite the valve or against the valve. PR4s don't have them. Michelin claim that the thing is perfect anyway. But we'll see. Uh, I'm going to bounce the tyres later. That might be in a later video. Who knows? So to seat these beads, all we need to do is pump a lot of air into it, into the tyre, get the pressure up, and you'll hear two bangs as the beads seat into the grooves. Wish me luck. Well, you heard the two bangs, that's the bead seated. Now I need to put the valve core back in. And finally, the most important job my little cap back on. And it's done. So, a couple of hours in the cold, got a job done and a bit of money saved. Um, I reckon even with those tools, it's going to pay for itself in no more than three sets of tyre changes. Uh, hope that was useful for you. Thanks for watching everyone, ride safe and I'll talk to you all again soon.